All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I'm Paul Brody. I am the Global Blockchain Leader for EY. And I want to welcome you to this uh, digital uh, uh, online event, all focused around zero-knowledge proof technology. And for me, this is an incredibly important deep dive into something that is absolutely foundational to grow the world of blockchain for enterprise users around the world. Um, when I finished university, I remember starting my first job and getting my business cards. And I was like, where's my email address? It was not on the business card. And what I was told is we can't use the internet because it's not secure. Because uh, email messages in the good old days didn't have encryption on it. And I think to a very large degree, the same thing is true for enterprises today. When encryption came to the public internet, it made it possible to have true privacy. It made it safe for commerce and it made enterprises feel comfortable that they could do business over the internet without putting their strategic secrets at stake. Now, of course, we're all on the internet, right? And we take encryption for granted that it's there and it's available and it works for us. Blockchains set a much higher bar for us to achieve because not only do we need to encrypt data, but we need to preserve the functioning of the consensus algorithm and the essentially decentralized nature of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and that has made kind of this whole new process significantly more challenging, but the stakes are just as large, perhaps larger, because whereas the internet was often unstructured around commerce, uh, blockchain is all about the digital transfer of value and the execution of business contracts. So this event is all about getting the deep dive into the core technologies that are going to make public blockchains uh, usable for all companies, especially the Ethereum blockchain. Now, EY has been investing in this space for several years now, right? And uh, my goal in having this event today and having our amazing people kind of share not only from EY, but from other organizations is we want to lay out our vision, our strategic roadmap, share the work that we are doing, share how we are aligned with other kind of key initiatives that are underway, all for the purpose of getting uh, EY and other organizations synced up together and working as one towards this shared goal. So with that, I'm going to bring up our agenda for the day, and then I'm going to give a little bit of a recap of what it is that, that, that our vision is around uh, blockchain uh, and, and where we're trying to go. So we have a fantastic uh, agenda for today lined up. Number one, I'm going to lay out a bit of an opening vision. And then we're gonna get into a, a series of 20 minute, very quick dives into some of the key work that's being done. We'll start with Michael Connor, who's gonna talk about the Nightlight um, library that we've developed uh, and have made into the public domain. And then after a break, we're gonna go into two really important discussions. The first around creating zero knowledge proofs with Socrates from the Technical University of Berlin, and then outsourcing pairing computations from Mary Maller with the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, and then we'll have another break. We'll have two more uh, uh, discussions first on faster proof composition from our very own Youssef Pousni, uh from Paris, and then a dive into Zexi uh, from the, uh, the University of California in Berkeley. Uh, and then we'll have one more break, and then we'll focus on two remaining topics, which is um, proving times uh, with Aztec, and then uh, Starkware will have a discussion. And each one of these is gonna be a quick set of 20 minute discussions with a, a focus on you know, what's being done now, what is the roadmap and, and where the open source resource is. Uh, then I'll be back with a brand new colored t-shirt uh, for the wrap up. Uh, before I go any further, I do wanna make a couple of thank yous. I first and foremost wanna thank uh, Duncan Westland, Dr. Duncan Westland. He is EY's global blockchain R&D leader. He's not speaking today because uh, even though he is an incredible visionary in this space, he has, uh, uh, he's far too modest and he is leaving the space for other people to uh, uh, continue. So this is, um, uh, th this is really important uh, that we have uh, Duncan as a participant. Uh, and then I wanna share some key links here. Um, I wanna share some key links here that people will wanna make use of. So first of all, we've got the Nightlight repository which is on GitHub. Secondly, we have a further repository on some of our deep dive materials. There's a baseline protocol, uh, which is a big part of what we're doing, and that is available on GitHub. And then finally, 
Uh, if you want to try out some of the stuff that we're doing or you want to keep up with what we are doing at EY, there's the EY blockchain website, which is at blockchain.ey.com. Right. Uh, and I want to go back and also add a couple more thank yous. First of all, to Marikit Klein Smith and Lindsay Reichelt, who have been driving our branding marketing, and then Eli Wolfson, John Frechette, and Hirko Carney, who have done a huge amount of the operational organizing and work that we have put together. So, with that, let me dump in for a moment into a bit of a recap of our vision and strategy, because I think that's incredibly important just to kind of lay some groundwork. And I won't take too long in that department because I'm very sensitive to the other far more interesting uh, uh, discussions going on. So, hey, Paul. If I sound like a broken, yes? Hey, Paul, quick interruption. Yes, Sorry about that. Looks like your slides aren't changing. Do you want to try unsharing your screen and resharing? Might have just frozen. Yes, let's do that. How's that? Yep, we can see our mission has not changed. Fantastic. All right. So um, let me briefly uh, recap here just the key links, right? Four key links, the Nightlight Repository, the Zero Knowledge Proof Deep Dive, the Baseline Repository, and the EY Blockchain kind of homepage. And now let me jump into kind of my opening talk here. So our vision is really about using public blockchains to make enterprise uh, users feel comfortable at scaling up uh, and using the Ethereum securely for their business to business transactions. Our mission is something that we've been talking about for a long time and it's very simple and it's very clear. We believe that blockchains are going to do for networks of companies what ERP did inside the single enterprise. Now, I know we have a relatively technical audience here uh, for, for today's call, but I want to take a second and just talk about what is it that ERP did that was so incredibly powerful. What ERP did is it made it possible for large enterprises, ones that got bigger than one or two stores or one or two factories, for the left hand to really know what the right hand was doing, right? If, if you pick a, a piece of merchandise at a Walmart store in California, Today, that triggers a replenishment process that might end all the way in China, right? That's only possible because of the way ERP integrates process, uh, organization, assets, and financial flows in a single system. And if you think about how that works between enterprise boundaries, the answer is not very well. Inside the enterprise, CEO of a company can say, listen, we are all going to use the same system. We are all going to conform to a particular process and we're going to work together. And that has driven incredible, incredible productivity gains around the world. But if you step back and look at how this process works the minute you cross enterprise boundaries, the answer is it doesn't actually work very well at all. But with blockchains, we can start to have secure information systems that can cross enterprise boundaries in a manner that's efficient and extremely fast. Right. And what that means, practically speaking, is that we think the future of B2B transactions are private, secure, regulatory compliant smart contracts that are paid and, and denominated in fiat currencies and are executed on public blockchains. In fact, our prediction is that a decade from now, more than 50 percent of the world's business to business contracts are going to be done on the public Ethereum blockchain. Right. Now, that may sound like a, an enormous amount, an incredible stretch, but that model is just based on looking at the adoption rates of public cloud as we went from kind of data center computing into the public environment. Right. And I think it'll be uh, no less reasonable to think of a similar level of transformation taking place. But all of that is contingent on us adopting kind of network scalable public blockchains. Because private blockchains, time and again, what we learn over and over is they don't have a scalable kind of an enterprise um, networking model, right? They tend to end up with uh, small groups of suppliers and partners uh, working in a particular siloed environment, a logistics network or an insurance network or a retailer's uh, particular traceability network. And sure enough, when we did our survey last year, we commissioned Forrester Research, what they told us, what we found out, was that the average private blockchain has 0.5 participants other than the founding company. And the reason for that is that although, you know, lots of companies, uh, uh, a small number of companies are willing to join consortium and a medium number of companies are willing to join somebody else's network, almost everybody wants to start their own network and be in charge of their own fate. 
And this is a problem that's kind of almost universal in the business community. Everybody wants to have control, right? And the reality is, is that if everybody wants to have control, it, it doesn't work, right? What does work and what's been incredibly encouraging is that what we found over and over again in talking to executives is that they are learning from this experience. And so now if you ask people who have actually implemented blockchain, in their enterprise, 75% of them will tell you that they believe that public blockchains are the future. Because if they can't have absolute control, the next best alternative is to work in an environment where their competition also cannot have control, right? And this is, I believe, the kind of the incredible leveling power, power of public blockchains. Now, the foundation of all of this to work is privacy. Privacy in business logic, privacy in data transfers. Um, we've spent a lot of time and energy working on this, right? Starting um, with our original uh, product, our kind of prototype that we launched back in October of 2018. Uh, and then, you know, gas cost for us was $100 for a single transaction, and that was not scalable, but we had kept at it. We introduced a, a solution, an, an open source public domain solution in 2019 called Nightfall, and we got it down to about $10 a transaction. And by the end of last year, we had it down to about five cents a transaction by throwing in batching and making use of other significant improvements that we'll be talking about today. Very importantly, since then, we've also been working on maturing this process to support regulatory compliance rules. So uh, allowable uh, business partners, not allowable business partners, audit functionality. And one thing that, that people get confused about a lot, and I sometimes think that people who don't love blockchain, they deliberately want to confuse the issue. They want to talk about privacy as if that's the same as anonymity, right, for, for illegal activities versus the privacy that enterprises need in order to do business without their competition seeing what's going on. So this uh, for us is really important. We want to provide business users with the maximum level of privacy that is consistent with regulatory compliance. We're not in the business of sort of unlimited privacy and anonymity. We're in the business of secure enterprise transactions that are regulatory compliant. And, and if that, that's a really important theme. The second thing to put on top of this is that transfers are not enough. It's great that I can pay you, if the, but if the terms and conditions of our business agreements are not private, then it's no good. If everybody knows that I'm buying mangoes from you at 50 cents a piece, I've already disclosed uh, like at least half of the most important information that uh, we're sharing. And the other half is how many. And Okay, I can do that transfer privately, but you've already shared such incredibly sensitive and important information. So um, we need to do more than just have private transfers. There's a lot of work left to be done around zero knowledge proofs. And at the top of that list is private business logic, right? We need to be able to say what the rules are, how we are going to work together as a set of enterprises. That for me is probably the top of the list. There's other stuff that has to be done. Things like uh, that are not necessarily dependent on zero knowledge proofs, but are critical for making the business ecosystem run, which means business identity and discovery, right? Who are you actually dealing with, right? This is, this is a particularly important issue. Synchronization of your process state. So it's great that we have similar information um, uh, or we have a similar shared agreement, but we also need to synchronize some of our core enterprise data, right? Uh, if you're in the world of enterprise computing, message queuing, you know, data synchronization is an essential part of what you do. It is also an essential part of what's gonna get done between enterprises. And then finally, tokenization. So one of the most important things that needs to be done under zero knowledge is a proper tokenization of inputs and outputs of the uh, uh, business infrastructure model that we're trying to create. My goal, our goal, isn't just to enable three or four companies to transact with each other privately and securely. You don't actually fully need a blockchain for that. What we want to be able to do is to make sure that the inputs and outputs of that process can be packaged up as standardized digital tokens, things like invoices, purchase orders, uh, 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 leases, uh, other types of assets, and they can then be plugged into the DeFi, the decentralized finance ecosystem, right? Our goal isn't just to create a set of private networks that are stitched together with the blockchain. Our goal is to create a secure private infrastructure that enables a whole business ecosystem, right? Where at the click of a button, not only can we have a business contract together, but we can actually have a, uh, uh, 
Uh, I can factor my invoice, I can get working capital, and I can do that without a huge amount of actual paperwork. So that's kind of the vision behind uh, uh, the work that we are doing, and especially the collaboration we established with Consensus and Microsoft to create the baseline protocol. And, and uh, we'll be talking a lot about that vision. How do we get there? For me, this is kind of incredibly important, right? It's great if EY gets there by ourselves, but that won't lead to a real transformation, right? If we think about how cloud and all other kind of computing technologies have really taken hold, it's always as public standards. It's always as something that's adopted and shared widely. And so our goal today is to do a lot of public sharing of our roadmap, some of our thinking, some of our best research, right? That's step one. Number two, we are sharing our progress and we are inviting others to join with us, right? We, we can't, shouldn't, and don't want to do this alone. We want to bring enterprises and leading thinkers along with us because the gold standard for security isn't just that you have open source code, it's that you have open source code with a robust community and ecosystem that is constantly inspecting and improving it. And then finally, I wanna reiterate our commitment to public domain uh, information, public domain uh, licenses. So in other words, no licenses, no surprises, no gotchas, right? Nothing you need a team of lawyers to sit through. You can use it however you need to. And our commitment to open source, right? This is, you know, yes, we're a business. Yes, we want to see this technology mature and we want it to drive business for EY. But at the most foundational level, if it isn't a shared effort, if it doesn't become universally available without lots of strings and complexity, then we know it will never get adopted. So I really want to emphasize again, our commitment to releasing strategic assets, millions of dollars of R&D work as public domain resources that are fully open source.